So welcome everybody. It's nice to have you here. Uh, the topic of the fourth meeting is mostly about the token development of NX Solar. And to that end, we have uh, Tom, who is our, our lead developer at the moment. Um, and then we have Olli and Alexi, who are interested in that field as newcomers. So why don't you guys tell a little bit about yourself first? Why don't you start, Olli? Uh, who, who are you? What do you do? Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm Olli, and uh, I'm an electrical engineer, energy engineer, and uh, been in the blockchain space for some years. Uh, just uh, as an enthusiast and as a small scale investor, and I ran into the project in the blockchain revolution group where Nico was promoting this, and I know from an experience that. Uh, engineering companies are looking at some blockchain solutions at the moment and energy markets is definitely one of the key fields where this technology could provide some extra value and for that reason uh, I, I have been very interested in the NX, NX project and wanted to hop on board to see uh, where this train is going and if I could provide maybe some technical uh, assistance and technical expertise in the field to identify what we need, where the markets actually need tokenization and and how, how could it help. And yeah, aiming to be helpful in, in that. That sounds great. Uh, great to have you here. Thank you. Um, Alexi, why did you go next? Yeah, so can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Yeah, so I'm Alexi Melda and I, <clears throat> I have uh, some experience from various startups and different projects as a both developer and designer. Uh, and lately I've been very interested in this blockchain technology and been studying mainly Ethereum and Solidity and de developing distributed applications. And then uh, Nico asked in the group if someone is interested in helping with the development so I, I said yes and I want to help so now I'm here. Fantastic. So, yeah. Thank you. That's Thank you for taking the time. Yeah. Uh, okay. Tom is an all-around geek who has been involved with Bitcoin and blockchain technology since 2012. And when Ethereum came around, Tom got interested uh, just purely for the technical reasons. I didn't actually believe in the ICO originally, but uh, when the value started rising like beyond $50, then I started investing in it as well. Um, well, uh, in solidity, uh, especially regarding uh, distributed applications, uh, my first uh, involvement was uh, in proof of existence type um, type applications where uh, you identify a document or a person or a thing or a device or something like that. And then I started just out of my own interest also experimenting a little bit more. And um, I had uh, a solar uh, power project with uh, a friend of mine. We were based in Finland and Belgium, and it was mainly about just packaging and installing stuff. And we had been doing a few rooftops, rooftop installations, and uh, putting uh, different testing uh, solar power with different types of battery systems. So. I thought that, wow, Ethereum would probably rock in something like this because you could connect different power plants together. So I found this, this group actually through a chance when they were just beginning. So I, I joined. I found out that these are open source. It's an open organization and they're actually doing it instead of just trying to make money. 
So now I'm here. Thank you for that intro. That's very good. Yeah, uh, we are open source and uh, open community and everybody is welcome to join in and contribute and we are here because we want to be, we want to be involved in blockchain. We want to make things better and develop things. And everybody's pretty much got their own um, day jobs or some, some, some people are studying. I have a lot of other projects as well. And, and uh, you know, it's not like we're not looking to make a lot of money with this. So that's important to understand from the beginning. We're trying to really develop um, a very solid product that has a shot of changing how, how we use and how we invest in, in renewable energies in the world. So that's uh, a little bit about the NX goals. But um, Oli and Alex, did you have um, did you have time to check in on us earlier? Do you have any questions on uh, further questions about what we do here? Well, I quickly uh, looked at the website, but I didn't have the time to look into details. But. As I, there is no white paper yet for it there. No, there's no white paper. We only have the one pager that is available on the web page. Okay. But yeah, that, since you brought that up, uh, that's one of the topics I wanted to cover today. A secondary topic um, is the white paper, which is also on the agenda. And then we could hopefully start writing that with the, with this new newly found uh, development team, which I'm, which I'm hoping that Tom will lead. And um, if Oli and Alex, if you guys feel like you wanna, wanna be part of it, that would be great. That'll be fantastic. Yeah. Yes. And it will be definitely better to have a lot of people involved than to have just a few people. Uh, and it will be the worst to have just one person involved in, in development. Just because you need uh, different points of view. And in Solidity, the main issue is actually not that the language is hard. It's not really a hard language to learn. It's just that you need to audit the code because there's literally money involved. So that's that's why uh having um, a developer team that can point out the bug before it's released it, it it would be better that there's many eyes is watching yeah that's that's a great point yeah definitely we want more more people on this and that uh, it's a great start if if we have three guys working on it already and um to push things forward, we should probably decide on the protocol that we're going to be working on. Uh, Tom, did you have an idea on that? Mm, the protocol? Well, first we need to know what the token should do. Is it, are we talking about electricity token? Or are we talking about an exchange token? Or are we talking about the token that people invest and speculate with? I think in the beginning we're talking about the MVP, which is a simple equity token. Um, so it's like an invest, it, it works as an invest, investing platform for, for solar energy projects. So the only real utility the token needs is to be able to be exchanged on an on an exchange pretty much and to be traded at this point and in the in the future of course uh, we have these uh, other uh, utilities that we talked about voting rights um, sparking up staking um, fizz fizzling down all these uh, different utility features discounted electricity prices and, and stuff like that um, okay series of questions so, sorry another series of questions actually are we going to do uh, a um, pre-ico with the uh, lower price or uh, certain benefits like uh, having another uh, 
uh, like token options and then soft cap and then hard cap or straight to a hard cap or are we going to have an open ICO where we are just going to raise as much money as possible or how are we going to do the ICO? Uh, definitely not open. Um, the, like I said, the, the point of the whole project was to not raise uh, vast amounts of money rather than to just build the projects. So uh, from the beginning, the idea was to only raise enough money to cover the expenses to building the power plants and, and uh, you know, management fees and whatever, like our salaries, and then uh, pay the contractors to actually build the plant and whatever comes, comes there. So uh, definitely there should be a cap. What is the cap? Uh, that, that depends on the project uh, that we are, we are picking from the pipeline. So uh, let me explain a little bit on that. So we are thinking about like uh, mini ICOs, uh, that's what we call them. So there will be a series of, because these, these uh, sizes of these projects can vary. Like let's say that you have a residential building that we are retrofitting with, uh, with solar panels. And that, that can be like, a, let's say 50, 50 grand, 100 grand project, or it can be half a million project if it's a, it's a, a slightly bigger building. And uh, we can have uh, multiple projects in the pipeline that we can fund through our platform. So we call those mini ICOs, and, and each ICO ends up funding one of these projects. Um, that's uh, the original idea anyway, of course. I would like to hear if you have any thoughts on that. What does the investor get? Mind about the because what confused me in the beginning was the, the energy energy sector in, in such that are we dealing with electricity uh, trading or are we dealing with production capacity? And here we are uh, dealing with production capacity, and in that sense. It's technically the same as, let's say, crowdfunding a restaurant, like just as an example, because it's the, the outcome, the meals or the electricity that is coming out of the capacity is part of the business that is, that is then not our problem in a way, but, but our, our problem, our, our task in this arrangement would be to organize funds for the units to start operating. And I think that's, that focuses, at least <laughs> was for me, a clear distinction of what is actual focus. And, and technically, I think it, it, it's a very scalable, scalable model, but also has to be thought out from that perspective. Um, uh, your voice is breaking up a little bit, but yeah, yeah, basically you got it. So it's just a, a way for anybody to, uh, whoever buys our token, uh, will end up owning a piece of the NX network, which comprises of these nodes that we call them nodes, like each power, power plant will become a node in the NX network. And um, the NX network produces electricity, which will then uh, be sold to the end users, and preferably under the market price. And the end users can be, well, of course, there's the host building who is who is likely to be buy, the first one who is uh, going to be buying this energy. And then the rest is going to be out in the open market. But uh, yeah, the in terms of what the token holder gets is uh, kind of like a piece of the piece of the NX network. So it's an equity token. And based on owning that token, uh, dividends is paid or um, how, how would you um, categorize that um, a monthly or a weekly payment for for holding for simply holding the token I think that can be hard coded within the token right yeah uh, but do the investors do they get the dividends in the form of a token yeah that's the that's the original idea yes but uh, we haven't really like this is what, what I'm telling you guys it's all uh, a concept that we've been uh, work working on the last uh, 
half a year, but we haven't, haven't really had um, technical enough people in the team yet to actually put it into reality and make it into a token. So that's why you guys are, are coming in. Yeah, so now we need to sit down maybe before the next meeting and think about the rules of engagement of value. Like, of course, some installation itself as a piece of hardware uh, can grow in value and another one, uh, another one might go down depending on how much there's um, demand for such services in the local market. And then the other aspect is that what's the energy price if it's used for selling electricity? Are we going to sell it in the open market through the national electricity exchange? Or are we going to sell it via contracts? Or does NX Network itself act as a retail energy company? Uh, you know, this kind of rules of how the token um, is going to pay the dividends based on what? I, I think that's the, that's the important distinction part that if it's about capacity financing, it is not about getting involved in the electricity trading as such, but as working as a, as a capital raiser for the projects. So in that sense, the, the end, end building that gets the install, installations will be then paying for the, as, a, as the, uh, in short, sort of paying back the loan from that system. So in that sense, I would see that this is, this is more like a crowdfunding platform for solar energy. Uh, as, as, at least how I understand it now. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's correct. Um, we have been talking about the like there would be an op option to actually buy energy from from the network, but uh, I, I think there's a distinction of two separate things here. Like, uh, okay, let me let me go back a little bit. So let's say that we have this we have this uh, partner company in Liechtenstein who is op um, who is building these plants right now and they do a pilot project for us. Their business is to find a suitable host building to install the PV plant on, after which they start producing electricity and selling it, selling it to, the, to the host building. So the company who installs it owns, owns, the, owns the plant. So what we would bring here, what NX would bring here is uh, instead of the, we, we, would, use, we would contract the company to build us the plant so then NX would end up owning the plant I think uh, the token holders would own the plant so then I guess the token holders in a set in a sense would be producing the electricity in a, like a peer-to-peer -peer way um, like a, a community a type of energy sharing pro how to how to say like community um, sharing of electricity that is uh, produced locally. So I, I wouldn't uh, imagine that it's very easy to uh, to start selling in a, in a, like a national grid or national uh, electricity markets. I think I think that's probably out of the question. I'm gonna break down if you don't mind. Yeah, market. please do. Okay, uh, the first uh, competitor in the market that started this whole scene basically is LO3 Energy and uh, it's based in Manhattan, New York. Was it Manhattan or Brooklyn? Anyway, in New York, uh, they built a network of a couple of rooftops and uh, they coded um, a smart contract in Ethereum without a token, just a smart contract uh, that allowed uh, the participants to sell energy to one another 
within a closed slope community. Competitor number two, WePower, is completely different. They are based in Estonia. They are an energy company that is selling electricity uh, into the market. Is everybody hearing? Yeah. Into the market. Yeah, please and, go ahead. An energy retailer. They are completely opaque, as in they don't at this point reveal who is taking part in their network, but they are partnering directly uh, with Estonia's biggest the former national energy company, and they plan to retail the energy uh, to the public. Um, then, um, the, the Sun contract, which is again like LO3 energy, except that this now is between energy producers, which can be basically any type or any size, but they focus on, um, on solar power. So they are based in Slovenia and uh, they focus on di distributed solar energy production. So their token uh, is supposed to uh, benefit the investors that invest in distributed solar energy power. Then Power Ledger originally installed uh, uh, a closed loop com community just like LO3 Energy uh, in, um, was it near Sydney anyway, or Brisbane? Anyway, in Australia, there was a pensioner community. And since in Australia, uh, it was possible because of the local regulations to do something like this they installed solar panels within this gated community and the participants could act as uh, a solar power producer that where in they buy energy from each other but later on uh, it will probably be possible in australia that these people will be directly able to sell to the grid. Right now, they need a middleman to do that. That's where Power, Le Power Ledger comes in. Now they are moving to India with bigger plans, but they are trying to replicate it with a larger project in India than they did in Australia. Um, and now, uh, finally, Siemens, the um, big industrial firm, they've struck a deal with LO3 Energy. And they uh, are probably using their technology. I am not sure. You have to ask from Siemens. But they just got funded by the Finnish government to produce a uh, virtual power plant. I'm not sure if it involves blockchain technology, but I have a hunch because they have a deal with LL3. So... Uh, That's very interesting. Um, so that's the market like. That's what the market is like. And the um, distinct... Uh, difference between the retail energy companies and those who are building the capacity is that with those who are building distributed capacity, they focus on making the contract in participating solar panel owners. So uh, um, different consumers or solar power plant owners have their own plants which they own and they connect together 
through the network. That's one box. Another box is building capacity and then retailing the energy network, energy network's uh, output to the grid, to grid consumers. Now this box can be also split. You build and you sell. Build or sell. So uh, that's what the market is like. Uh, the component manufacturers like Siemens and Bosch, for example, who are interested in blockchain technology, they tend to be the companies that have the money and the resources to build, but they want to buy the application from somebody else and they want to buy, or they want to outsource the sales of, of the capacity to somebody else and they want to put it on somebody else's rooftop. So uh, that's the breakdown of the competition right now. That's very good. You have a really good idea on the market, much better than I do. Um, yeah, it's very, very important to be aware of the competition. I, I, I feel like there's plenty of room on the market to grow. Like there's simply not, like uh, in terms of the demand for this kind of thing in the future, I think we are in a good, good place. I think we can, we can take a lot of these ideas on NX network and, and combine and just uh, build the best possible product. So that's what we try to do here. Um, well, yeah, well, 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 what do you, what do you think, Tom? Like what, what are you, uh, the, the quintessential uh, qualities that you would like to see in this, this token? Well, it depends on what we are focusing on because I came up well, we want to we want to build the best pro possible end user experience and the best possible uh... okay, I'm going from hardware up to sales uh, I came up with hashcraft because it's a non blockchain technology it's a tango it's just a different type of mathematical function that goes really, really well with IoT devices. So you can connect even individual solar panels, even, even individual solar cells together because there's no bandwidth uh, limitation or there's no, or anything apart from what the hardware limits it or there's no capacity limitation on how much the blockchain can handle. That yeah, I'm very interested personally on the Hasgraph. I don't know uh, much about it, but um, I'm eager to learn. There's Hashcraft, there's IOTA, there's IOT chain, there's Holochain, uh, and there's uh, Ryblox, there's plenty of others coming that utilize this technology. Just, and the main reason is that it facilitates transactions between uh, IOT devices, basically, it removes the, the limitation of blockchain. Blockchain can handle only a limited number of transactions. Uh, so that's the whole point about it. So yeah. the focus is on building a uh, um, network where these devices transact between each other, then we can write the digital contract between the devices uh, to be automated through Hashcraft and on top of that, a digital contract retaining solidity. Now, another topic, if we are simply going to build capacity, then it's a whole different ballgame altogether. Because then we don't necessarily need Hashcraft and we don't necessarily need those IOT cards that go in the solar inverter or in the or um, integrated in the panel or anything like that. So in capacity building, we are just selling equity, as you said. So it can be any project of any type. So we can use a simple equity token that pays dividends. Uh, to customers 
on any uh, ICO platform, Ethereum or any other platform that can do the same. And um, now when we are going past hardware to the market side, then we are talking about sales contracts. So then we are involved with uh, an exchange token that is uh, connected to uh, an oracle or a human broker or a computer that tries to sell the energy at a good spot rate or otherwise it can look for good bulk deals and sell the uh, el electricity in bulk and they pay the customer dividend or it can be a retail contract where it in simply the investors earn a dividend of total sales. So uh, it depends entirely on what they focus on, uh, what will be like my uh, ultimate uh, vision. But obviously, if you want to end up like the Microsoft of energy in in the in the future, then you will have to uh, develop sort of like an operating system, which is entirely um, an operating an operating system for energy uh, capacity building energy exchange and build it component by component so it uh, can integrate well especially with uh, city planners and uh, industrial planners i think uh, microsoft is probably not what we're going for here it's because of the centralization we we do aim to be a decentralized network in that sense that we or at least the hope is that there, there could be like this nx uh, reg for example regional nx circles that form autonomously and uh, are able to communicate with each other through the token uh, this is of course just an idea and of the end, end product, like uh, you know, the MVP, there's a long, long, uh, long gap between the MVP, which is a simple investment platform, to the actual like uh, the, the smart contract, um, Tangle, IoT um, token, full-on utility token, and they might be two different tokens altogether if that's if that's more plausible that way. Um, but as you said, at this point, to to be able to launch the first uh, first funding round for the first project and build the first node, uh, basically any platform will suffice. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I guess that's the point. So the building I think a lot of power plants that would be the simplest form of of, of introducing. Uh, introducing us to the market and then think about the rest I think Alexi had something to say. Yeah, I think we should use Ethereum since it's the most known of these platforms for the MVP at least. Yeah, that, that has been the consensus so far. Yeah. So if, if it's just about capacity building, just about financing solar power, that, that will be the easiest thing to do, and the easiest thing usually is the best thing. Because the more com the, the more simple it gets, the the more realistic it's to you know to, to build. Right, of course. That's that's why we want to start like baby steps with the MVP, and uh, then we want to of course keep developing it, and and make it a, a, a full on user experience, maybe in a couple years time. Um, but yeah, we, we do want to take our time. Yeah, 
MVP is totally the most important part, also in, in according to how I see it. Yeah, I totally agree because that's the that's the way we get the word out, and and we do want to have a functioning product right on on at the launch. We don't want to be uh, doing an ICO on top of promises only. But we want to actually deliver ownership of the actual first plant for the first token holders. So that will be our MVP and, and we should focus on that um, while keeping in mind that the roadmap is, is uh, you know, we, we are thinking far ahead as well with the development. Okay. Any, anyone else? Oli, did you have something to add? Sebastian, Nettie, you guys there? They have their Microsoft microphones off. Yeah, that's what we normally do, not to uh, interfere with uh, with everybody else. But I think maybe they uh, they tuned out. Well, that's okay. And this will be um, this will be on the public record anyway. So, how should we proceed? Yeah. What do you reckon, Tom? Well, uh, I think that now that we know what to do, the next step is how to do it. So, uh, I I would like to make a a, a breakdown of what the token itself should do and how the investor should get their dividend in what form and how much and get just down to the, to the details. Right. And um, it doesn't, uh, from a token developer's point of view, it doesn't matter uh, how much or where the hardware is going to be installed. It's just about how the customer is going to get paid. Yeah, exactly. But so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy if you can take over the, the token development part and, and if, if you can, can you, do you think you can work on the white paper as well uh, from the development side? Yes, but there's one thing, one detail that has to be noticed. Okay. If, we'll, if we have some kind of roadmap for the ICO. Sorry? No, I can't hear anything. How, if we have a kind of yeah. roadmap for the ICO, it will help. Because then we, we will know how many tokens will be created and um, well, what is irrelevant is where it's gonna be sold or anything, but the, the basic properties of the token. The token, from the token developer's point of view, if I'm making just a bit digital contract with the team, is that how the customer is going to get paid. But if we have a scope of the total value, uh, of of the token and the ICO, like from the financial side, then it will help to um, uh, code the token according to your preferences, so we don't need to change much. Are you so, familiar with the Open Zeppelin token? No. Ah. Sorry, Open what? Open Zeppelin. I <laughs> pasted the link. They have like these templates for various types of tokens, so they've been audited. So I think we can. Oh, that the... would be nice. I'll take a look. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. I'll take a look as well. Thank you. Okay, I have nothing else to add. So, uh, 
we so uh, just to just to be clear um, so you would you would need to know exactly how much we, we are going to raise for the first no. ICO is that it no the number of tokens how many are we going to release in the tokens not in euros oh yeah right but it, it does depend like we, we, we do need to pick the value uh, the face value of the token to be somewhat reflective of of uh, fiat currency I guess maybe uh, in tens or hundreds or something like that so it, it is something that we need to decide and consider but we, we, we won't do it now Yes, but uh, definitely, definitely a good point. Yeah, something we need to solve. In Satoshi's, actually. <laughs> so if you're going, to... right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So these properties, because when I'm finishing up with the token, the token is obviously a part of the I the ICO. So the ICO itself has to be uh, programmed into the contract that people are going to put into their my Ethereum wallet. I see, I, I understand. So um Alexi Olli are you are you in with the with the project? Do you want to learn some more of it or yeah I'm in It's great to hear. Welcome on board. Yeah, great. Oli, how about you? Are you still with us? Can't hear anything. I guess I'll get back to Oli later. But yeah, uh, good, good talk, guys. I'm pretty happy that you get, came here and you're going to help out with the development. We really. Uh, we were really waiting for you guys <laughs> for a long time already. So that's really cool that we can push this forward. And um, let's keep talking uh, on Telegram. Alexi, I'll send you a link to our core team chat so we can keep uh, keep yeah. talking there. Uh, but, how uh, many of you are in Finland? So maybe we can meet. Uh, at point. least me and uh, Sebastian are in Finland yeah. right now. Tom is in Finland. Oh yeah, Tom is in Finland. Uh, Tom, do, do you live in Helsinki or in somewhere nearby? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. No, oh, you no, we'll must come. To Definitely, we we can uh, arrange a meeting here. Yeah, I'll arrange that. Yeah, sure. Um, anything anybody wants to add before we call it? Nope. All right. Good talk, guys. Talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.